All right, so as I was saying, uh, those of you who follow either me on Twitch or on my YouTube channel when I've been going over Shusaku games, those that game so far uh, that I've gone over seemed rather, I'm going to go ahead and say, a little bit more passive than we're used to seeing. But the question is, what are we used to seeing? I'm going to switch directions and go into a nice fighty game because you guys wanted that. And what am I but someone who lives to give you what you want? So you should find this game very interesting. Let's see, put the players here for everyone to see. Um, you said old blood? You know, I thought about doing that. I think I know exactly what game you're referring to. And I actually thought about going over that game. Uh, are you thinking about the recent uh, Isidol game that he lost? Is that what you're thinking of? Yeah, I thought about going over that one. In the end, it uh, just didn't seem appealing enough. So I'm going to go over a nice Kongji game. Kongji, one of the strongest players, if not the strongest player in China. For those of you who are still somehow unaware of who he is. And doesn't usually disappoint in terms of violence. I might do that, Merrick. Good suggestion. But alright, as every game I go over, we do not have anything unusual here. We have a nice little opening, nothing unusual, especially for nowadays. Uh, one thing that I did thought was a little bit weird, and just a minor, minor strange thing, is we have this little mirror opening right now. And whenever I see this, I kind of cringe at the next move. It's like, are these people actually going to play each other? Or play exactly uh, what each other's playing? Are they going to play Mirror Go? Surely they're not going to do that, right? Yeah, it is a little bit riskier, but a lot of us don't really consider this to be anything other than normal. Um, we're pretty much trained to see... This is a little bit risky because our 3-4 stone is facing our opponent and we've all been taught that it makes it really, really easy for black to approach. This we can identify as a risky uh, thing to do. Uh, when Deep Snow says D3 is risky, it, it's probably risky for him because he's a 2-don, so he understands a bit more about Fuseki and direction of play and things like that. Probably less risky for those 5k and under. But definitely caught my attention. Uh, in the end, Black amazingly does not play the Chinese. <gasps> Didn't play the Chinese. That's really, really strange. Especially nowadays when everyone's playing the Chinese and he didn't do it. So points to him. Unfortunately, we will be docking points from White because he did play the Chinese. So that's a little less interesting. So, you thought we were going to have a game that didn't have a Chinese variation. I'm sorry to disappoint you. We are in every game from now till the end of time. But it is called the Shore Wind Strategy for a reason, so there's no doubt a very, very good reason why White is playing it, i.e. he wants to win. Black has an option. He can grab himself an extension while approaching the 3-4 stone, and I confess that's probably exactly what I would have imagined here. A uh, nice, really... It's a bit of a, more of a passive idea than just to take your extension and force him to a close and go about your business. Black type take a more active role in this game and approaches the 4-4 four, four stone. This has actually been a bit more common as well, for a few different reasons that I don't really want to go into just yet. Um, I am actively seeing a lot of players not approach the 3-4 stone in favor of the 4-4 stone. Uh, some of it has to do with Triseki, some of it has to do with uh, finding new variations. 
those of you who are watching the video of this, I apologize for that notification. Uh, but white backs off here. Plays one point. Black has another option. Is he going to back off himself? A bit unlikely. A bit unlikely. If you really wanted to start uh, building up frameworks and all that stuff, he'd probably go and take his extension from his 3-4 stone uh, first, I would think. Instead, he remains a bit more territorial and threatens to go into the corner. Now, one thing we know about this is that it's regarded as a slow... Well, not... Okay. It's regarded as something you don't have to respond to. You don't have to say, oh no, my corner, I must respond. We can play elsewhere. Because even if he gets one extra move, what are you going to do? We've got our extension down here, so we can just drop down, and we've got a pretty good shape there still. In exchange for getting a free move somewhere else. So yeah, we don't have to respond to this. And besides, maybe we don't want to respond to the 3-3. Maybe we want to respond to the attachment, with the attachment rather. Or maybe with the pincer. Well, you lose those options when you hit the 3-3. So how do you know if you want to actually play it? Well, as we see white do, white actually approaches a 4-4 stone to see what black is going to do. If black, for example, backs off here and says, I really want to develop the top here, or maybe he plays up high saying he wants to develop the top here, well, as white, you then have the option of saying, well, I'm going to pincer you now, so you can't do that. Or, I'm going to attach, so you can't do that. And that's not a bad idea. One of the reasons why we leave that 3-3 alone. Black, instead, says, I'm going to pincer you. Why is that pincer interesting? Why is that pincer so interesting? In regards to maybe what I have just said. What is Black's idea here? What's his goals? What's his interests? What is his wants? I just made it sound like he's on a dating site. Alright, still threatened to develop the top or bottom, develop the right side... Alright, essentially Whenever you are pincering like this, uh, one overly simplistic way of saying, of looking at it, is a person pincering is saying they're not really certain where they're getting their territory from. So it doesn't seem all that important to turn around and freak out and try and take this away from him because it looks like Black really isn't interested in development there right now, or maybe he would have backed away uh, high or low. Right now, it looks like he's interested in the right, uh, may, might be interested in the right-hand side. So white develops his corner, forcing the top for black. And now he has an option of changing direction or going into the corner. If he goes into the corner, for example, and let's say black builds up a wall, is this the uh, optimal wall that you want? for uh, the stone that you just played? What do you think? Is that a good position? Is that too far away? Is that... Uh, well, Gote and Sente aside. It's a bit too far, isn't it? If Even if we give him a wall here, it's not really where... He doesn't really have the stones in place to use the wall as effectively as he wants, and oh my dear god, Origin, stop doing that. There we go, I signed out of Origin. That... Uh, it's EA's client. I've tried disabling the sounds on it repeatedly, but every once in a while I still get this doon 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 sound out of nowhere if I forget to completely close the program. So, those in the video just heard that twice. Awesome. Uh, but yeah, if we have a wall here, we kind of want a stone at least two spaces a bit more uh, closer to it to use it effectively. Here there's an enormous gap that we're going to have to defend and defend and defend. On top of that, as I'm going to get this right, who said it? Okay, as RJM pointed out, this wall is actually going to be played in Gote if uh, White does this. So we can give him the Gote wall and then invade the place that is still way too far away. 
So that seems fine. Which is why white jumps in immediately. What's the downside of doing this, though? Are there any downsides of jumping in like this? Any at all? Or is it all good? Do it every game. Oh no, Grooviest has pointed out that we are creating a group that can be under attack. And as we know by now, groups that are under attack are typically worth about a million points. Roughly, roughly, about a million points. So, though you are trying to disrupt everything that Black is trying to get, when you create weak groups while you're trying to do that, they are still going to profit. And Ukasus now realizes the value of punctuation. Anyway. So black kicks. Leaving white to decide what to do. White, of course, is going to try to use all of his stones together. So he takes his time to change directions. He could go ahead and extend up, but there's no guarantee his opponent's going to give him sente. He might decide, well, I'm not going to respond to you. I'm going to follow up here. Because what are you going to do? Are you going to get a base? That's fine. I'll kill off the right-hand side. Are you going to jump out? That's fine. I can still kill off the right-hand side. I can do whatever I want. And you're still really, really heavy, as Deep Snow's pointing out. We could then turn around and say, all right, I'm going to play faster here. But still a bit of the same thing. Black doesn't have to respond to this. He could respond to this in ways that leave cutting points. He could respond to this simply by playing on the right-hand side, uh, by playing the small knight to attack. White instead, oh, did I, oh, I didn't just kill a tree. Ah, good, I already did that. Phew. White then instead says I'm going to follow up this uh, Seki and use it to settle myself. Okay. So here we go with the settling ourselves. And Black says no settling yourself. I'm not going to just back off here and let you connect or something while you get this amazing base because then I'm not really going to look like a professional so much as a 20Q and we're looking to avoid that because this would be a really really great outcome for white you got to invade, you got this enormous corner for free while you somehow managed to con black into just killing a one stone we're not going to do that, no way no one should have wanted to separate this stone here Twenty Qs play P sixteen instead of R thirteen. R thirteen not on board. I are convuzzled. Okay. Anywho, so now White. Oh, okay. I see. So now White has to decide what we're going to do. White sides of Blaylahane. And a bit of a complicated variation here, but black actually connects instead of extending. Why does he connect? Good question. This is a really, really strong response. We're leaving cut shapes, we're making it, or cutting points, sorry, not cutting shapes. Well, kind of the same thing. We're leaving uh, options for us to easily separate these two stones, they have to really, really work to try to connect. Uh, we're nice and strong so we can even uh, jump out, keep everything separated. It looks a bit weird, and I think everyone would probably play this move simply on reflex. And then maybe getting into a variation, I don't know, maybe like this, which is going to wind up being Gote, and then bl uh, White gets to come out. Got to live in the corner and play lightly to escape. That'd be pretty good for white. 
Instead, Black says, I'm not letting you get stronger on my position. If you want to get stronger with any of these stones, you're going to have to fight for it still. You're not getting any easy bases out of me. So White says, how about I get you to respond to that? Can I get you to do that at least? And Black says, okay, I, I, can, uh, I can respond there. Why not? I'm getting myself some of them territories while I'm responding to you. And you're still weak. Now what are you going to do? White says, now I'll connect. Black says, okay, if you want to try and live there, then I'm going to make certain that you're disconnected from the outside. So you are still two groups, you are still not quite alive yet, and I'm actively attacking uh, your top. So pretty good result so far for black, and not a very good result if we had just blindly extended this stone up instead of connecting. As Merrick has pointed out, that connection is, it is really a bit deceptive in how nice it is. So white moves to connect. Black moves to surround. An interesting move here. Very, very interesting move here. White is essentially trying to settle himself in the corner. And black is actively moving to ensure that he can keep him there now that he's made the decision that he wants to go in the corner instead of coming out. Well now, he may never be able to come out. That is a hard decision to make. A lot of people would follow him down immediately. They would have their sights solely set on getting this as territory and forget everything else. They wouldn't be able to actually see that there's any profit to allowing white to, let's say, uh, come under, I don't want to click, uh, to come under at Q18 in exchange for that influence that you're getting outside. So let's find out if that's true or not, or if black actually made a mistake. Because maybe black loses this game. That's entirely possible. Maybe black lost this game, and that was the decision for it. Who knows? Who knows? Deep Snow says White gets to J15. J15. Okay, after W. Yes, there is still uh, a lot of options there, even if we do drop down, for uh, Black to still come out. Or for White to still come out, sorry. That is true, too. But I'm not sure if White could actually play that right now. I mean, there's still... The disconnect there with that shape. I don't know, might be wrong. So white or black surrounds. White says, I know all about them Aji Ajis and those pokey pokies, because I've seen bats tie games. So he creates Aji, and now there are places to poke. Oddly enough, he does not actually take advantage of it immediately. He decides to first live. He created that because if white, or if, sorry, if black really wants to try to kill, then he can go back and try to use uh, the cutting points uh, to escape. Instead, Black says, I have all this influence, I've got strong corner, there's still a large move on the board, I am taking it for myself. Mm-hmm. Lovely little K4. Nice extension on the corner, using the influence we just gained rather well. And now, slowly but surely, we start to find out why I actually picked this particular game. I actually picked it, believe it or not. 
because it looks frustrating. I like looking for games where I would not be like to be in someone's position and then find out how they handle it. And believe it or not, it's Black's position I don't want to be in in this game. And we're going to find out why in a minute. I will give you a hint. You can see a hint, just a hint, of why that is already on the board. Because if we look at the decisions that White has made so far, we see that he's wanted the corner. We see that he's wanted the outside as well as the corner. So in just locally, we see that he's wanted Black to get nothing. He wants it all. He wants to take the uh, points. He wants to live on the outside. He wants to just reduce all the things. So that is a hint on what we are about to see. <laughs> White is 3Q. Uh, actually, you are almost correct. He's a professional 3Don. So you got the number right. Way to go. So it approaches and says, you know what? I would really like to slide under that stone and reduce all your points. Is that, is that good with you? And Black says, no, that is not good for me. I'm going to just reduce you because I get what you're really trying to do. You want me to drop down and then you can probably even uh, lean and get something in the middle. There's still cutting points to reduce me. That's probably not something that we're going to get. So let's just reduce you first. White says, I like my initial plan, so I'm going to make certain that you can't connect. Because that is something that's really, really large. Imagine if you actually played the, de uh, the defense in the middle, or the corner rather, <laughs> opposite of the middle. And we saw maybe, I don't know, let's say random move. Let's say we saw a cap here that forced him back. A connection to uh, bring all that together. And suddenly, with very, very vulgar moves, you can see how easy it is for Black to start developing all of this for himself. I'm sure White can read that out a lot better than I can. He decides, nope, I'm going to make sure you don't connect those stones up. You're not growing this huge area on me. It's not happening. I'm just not going to do it. Come up with plan B. Black says, fine, plan B is to kick you and develop regardless. Because here's one thing I really, really hate seeing, and that's this stone. Anyone know why I hate seeing that stone? Anyone know why at all? Ah, <sighs> Aji. Aji sums up why I really, really, really hate seeing that stone. I mean, I would like to say, dude, you ignored me. I can follow up and kill you somehow, right? But I know we can't, because there's an attachment, which almost ensures insta-life, and there's still an escape. Shoulder hits, attachments, leans, whatever can still escape. So, headache time. We can't really kill this and take a fourth of the board for ourselves, as we would really, really love to do because we're greedy. Or if you aren't, I am. So that's what I would like to do. So as a result, you wind up thinking these like really bad thoughts like, well, I can defend my corner and ensure these extra points go to me but he's just going to escape. So so maybe I should like force him to live in the corner and just try and surround. But what happens there is you only get like this much of the area as he cuts and like lives here. Indeed, indeed. So black is trying to develop the right-hand side. There is a ridiculous amount of Aji in the lower left-hand corner. 
White knows that he can't just take all of the left-hand side for himself. Ooh, white n3. I like the idea that you want to reduce that Merrick, but you have to figure four savings are a really, really good thing to look for when you're behind enemy lines. So what do you think? Are there any um, forcing moves that you can make in that area? Okay, P3 is one. And once again, points for him. P5 is the standard move. And that's exactly what white plays. I found one P... Yes, the cutting point is a forcing move. This is why Ukasus is fort on. That is a strong forcing move too. I mean, that's an Atari. That's not just like some attachment. That's threatening to kill a stone. I like that answer, Ukasus. So yeah, very, very basic, found in every single reduction corner book in the entire world. To go ahead and cap the third line stone on the enclosure. Because what you are threatening to do now is attach and attach for shape. So understandably white or black respond in such a way that takes one of those attachments away. Not gonna get it. Okay. Now we're still behind enemy lines, we're still in trouble. We're still behind enemy lines, we're still in trouble, so what we're going to do now is we're going to look for a more forcing moves. And so we find almost exactly what Merrick wanted to do. And that's this. And it is about this time that I get really, really annoyed and want to resign. Because I see myself falling under attack here if I'm not careful. I mean, the moves, uh, the three stones there at K4, if I just keep responding like this, I'm going to be under attack. My stones, which were happily growing this awesome area for myself, are actually going to have to not live if I'm not careful. That's weird. That's very weird. So black comes up with a really, really nice option. He says, okay, if I keep responding locally, you're going to kill me. I mean, you've got how many forcing moves do we have here? We've got one forcing move potentially if we need it, two forcing moves potentially if we need it. We can still jump out. So if white gets these moves, is there any chance of actually being able to still kill him? Probably not. And he's going to have a nice light shape. We're going to be heavy. And our three stones in the middle are just going to die. Well, they're not going to die, but they're going to wish they were dead. They're going to live, and then we're going to resign. Which really is the same as letting him die. So instead, he separates. Very simple. Yep. He just goes ahead and separates them. It's like, alright, if you want to connect on the second line, you can do that. White says, but, but I have, I have, I have forcing moves. I mean, you're supposed to go down, I play this, you connect, I play P3, and then I come out. That, that was the deal. But now, black again just separates again. Makes it impossible for white to save everything. So that's a really, really nice way of not getting frustrated and just resigning. Just remain nice and calm and moves that are threatening all of these, uh, all of these forcing moves. Don't get greedy, because remember, the reason why I said I wanted to play here and, you know, just get killed as, uh, as black, it's because I'm greedy and I want to respond to all of these moves so I can kill everything on the inside. And that... Uh, the whole philosophy of trying to kill everything, it's really, really fun to do when you can actually, you know, pull it off. But usually you can't, so it's not a good idea. And Black knows this, because he's pro. So, White's going to get something there. 
but he's not going to get it all. So we're still in fine shape. So white went for a reduction, didn't get to kill all the things, didn't get to take all the things away, so he calls no joy and decides to defend the corner. Since white went back and defended, black gets to defend. White continues to expand, but it's really, really difficult to kill that stubborn little d6 stone. And here we see an example as to why. You can try and surround it, but it can still come out. You want to do f8? f8 looks a lot safer, yeah. This is just at the very edge of what might be safe. Because if we draw that stupid little sector line between these stones, I mean, that is right there on the edge. Playing f8 would be a little bit safer. Well, it would be bad shape, but it would also probably be good for you if uh, white turned around and tried to take, it a bit, uh, take advantage of it immediately because then you can get stronger by poking at it. I mean, is white, if white really wants to do something like this, it's just going to be good for you. So white's just, black's just like, I'm fine here. Attach. White extends, not leaving cut points behind. Because why not? There's no reason to let him. I mean, white and black's out. Black is actually getting shape. Black can drop back down. So, uh, black's fine. Hello, iced one. Attached to weak stone. You do have a point there. You do have a point there. In this case, he's attaching to it in order to, uh develop a bit, a bit for himself. Not sure what you could have actually played instead. Yeah, I was just thinking of, what, e10? Two passive? Yeah, that. Yeah, he's just gonna come out if you play there. And if we jump, that's no good either. So, he instead he tries to get as much as he can for himself. And so we see this. We see a turn, but again, black calls no joy. I'm not going to do that. You can cut me out. That's fine. I can Hane and get to the right again. And then we're kind of back in square one where we were when this all began. Looking for Aji. Black says, you know, live here. White looks to create some more Aji, because there's that cut point. That cut point is going to be forcing, so that forcing move might be useful. And then he jumps out, keeping pace with the black stones. But instead of jumping out again, black has a little bit of shape for himself, makes certain that he can't be completely disconnected. And also, 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 also threatens to disconnect the white stones. Black says, no, really, I'm threatening to disconnect you. White connects. Black connects. White moves to defend himself. forcing black to connect up. And this is an interesting decision. This shows us that white is no, not only a little bit greedy, but he's also very risky. I mean, are these stones actually just 
being sacrificed, the whole H3? Is White just giving those up? Mm-hmm. Black says you can't connect. So White connects. Now there's a bit more Aji here, because White can connect up. So is Black going to have to play L4? Mm-hmm. He played an annoying little forcing move, and now we have to decide how to deal with it. But that's really, really brave, because if Black actually came down, and it turned out that we couldn't live there, I mean, you have to be spot on with your life and death to play this kind of move. Because you're not quite alive yet, and if you get cut off, you have to live locally, so you have to be able to read out, oh yeah, I'm, I'm fine there, we're good, no problems, I have a whole, like, four spaces to live in, that's enough. Can be cut with, uh, yeah. Alright, so connects, black defends, and here we go with annoying, frustrating set of moves number two, or three, or whatever we're on right now. Because now that black has this, as, as black, I would be a happy person. I'd be like, okay, I'm taking roughly a fourth of the board for myself, I still have a group that I can attack, um, the left hand side is kind of enormously, completely, solidly territory, but this is looking pretty well for me. So white tries to reduce, and now we have to decide how, no actually, I'm still frustrated as black, I would like to be black. Uh, but it would be frustrating. Okay, that's a really weird sentence. Um, I do like Black's position, but I'm not certain if I would like to have it uh, in an actual game, is what I'm saying. Well, I might be able to handle it, but... I know that one false move and black loses everything, whereas white has solid territory. I mean, you can count how many points are there. You can't really count how many points black has yet, because he hasn't made them solid and white is moving to get rid of them. So one slow move, one uh, bad response to uh, a move that white's trying to get for Aji, and you're going to be massively reduced and have nothing. So, there's still a sense of danger here as black. Which is why I kind of look for these uh, kind of games when I'm uh, wanting to review. Because I, I like looking for positions that I know would make me uncomfortable. So, immediately, Black's response is not to kill all the things. It has not once in this game been to kill all the things. He's not being greedy. He's like, okay, I'm I'm gonna take ninth line territory, that's that's okay. White jumps further in. Black says, right, I get it, you're aiming for the cut points, I'm going to protect those. Something that, again, takes a lot of confidence. And reading. Confidence helps, too. Because you're kind of letting your opponent deeper into your territory. Which means you're fine with that. Here, if he comes deeper in, we're nice and strong, we can probably still do something. Let's find out what we can do. So, white jumps in even further. And black decides to poke. Trying to keep that bottom territory first. 
And now things get really interesting, because White says that was too much, and clamps. You're not getting out of here again. Ooh, Ukasus was going to say it. Mm-hmm. He's taking on a more aggressive role. But even now, we have to ask ourselves, we have to ask ourselves, do we really see this living or, or dying? Because keep in mind, when a group knows that it's in trouble, the chances that we're actually going to kill it are incredibly small. However, there is one important thing to note here, and that is this group. The one in the middle is struggling a little bit too closely to the top group. So the fight here should not be just locally. It's going to affect both of them. And that's a great way to deal with... Um, word. Greedy players. So white plays Hane. I resent that deep snow. This is totally not how you play against me. Uh, when you play against me, you let me get away with everything and I get to kill you and it's all good. And that's that that's how we do that. Don't listen to Deep Snow. He's lying. Yeah, and don't play Ko's against me because I'm really, really good at them. And you'll never win them. Just saying it for your benefit. Alright, so black plays the Atari. White says I want to leave. Black takes. White defends. And we keep the attack in the center. These two groups were hurting each other, and Black is not for an instant going to forget that fact. The real profit is not in trying to, you know, seal off all the bottom territory, but ensuring that these two weak groups don't connect. So White has to connect, Black gets to disconnect, and we cannot find a better example of what to do when two weak groups are running towards each other, right? Very, very basic separation. We always see it. This is a really great example of how that turns out. I mean, they're just three lines apart, right? It doesn't get any more black and white than that. Ha, black and white, because that's the stones they're using. I made a funny. So white connects. Black strengthens himself. He's not going to be able to uh, cut through. And now white has a decision. Do we try and save those stones? White says that we are not going to. We are going to invade deeper in. I think that's a time suji. Which white obviously connects. Yeah, I think what he was probably doing here is counting. Because in the game, Black decides to disconnect this. And he was probably finding out how many points that's worth versus responding here and potentially Gote. And then maybe only getting, like, that instead. That, and with the descent, we have to figure that there's still Aji in the corner. Like, right here. When you add L4 possibility. Yeah, that really is hard to count. So white says, can I connect up to my corner? Black says, no, but thanks for asking. Black then ensures that his uh, 
small knight, not really all that weak. Black is back in province in the corner that white's been ignoring. White was decided to ensure that uh, he's reduced the bottom sufficiently, which means he has to give something up in exchange. And here it's going to be this. A happy, happy, happy co. So white takes. I will warn you, it's short co. Black, white threatens to take two stones. And says that's not worth it. Have the three stones. Black says, okay, I will have the three stones. Nice and short code, just how I like them. Black threatens to disconnect. White goes into greed mode and says, no, you needed to respond to that and make certain that everything was fine here. So black moves to disconnect. White hanes, black moves to disconnect. Forcing black white to extend. Now, once again, and by deep snow uh, and his lovely exclamation there, he probably already sees it. Do you see it there, deep snow? Yeah, you see the problem here? Uh, can anyone else see it before I say what it is? Uh, J8? No? Ukasus, can you see it? They're all betting on you. Uh, well, let's see. Here's what happened. Essentially, White is trying to further reduce, black is saying I'm going to disconnect you, white is saying that's fine, I'm going to be fine here, and is thus separated. And I think everyone's able to see it. There are dangerous cuts, there are dangerous cuts indeed. By saying that I don't care if these groups are disconnected, well, you're saying you're fine with having two weak groups in the area. And if you're fine with that, then you must be fine with getting that group cut off. Because obviously that's what you are saying. So now it's not just about the bottom group, it's also about the middle group. White says, well, I'm going to live down here first. Black says, that's great, I'm going to kill your middle, if you don't mind. White says, that's okay, I can live everywhere, didn't you get the memo? Black would like him to prove it. Is it H11 to prevent K7? H11, yoink. To prevent K7. Uh, what is K7? K7. Oh, the cut? That's, um... The other part of what makes that really good. Yes, there is the cut there, but it's more than that. He got to defend it and point out that there's two weak groups here that, that are in uh, deep, deep trouble. So that is really, really cool. Where was I? Ah, I missed my place. There we go. So black pokes. White connects. Where did I get the SGF from this? I have a couple of different sites, actually. I'm not sure. I can go back and find out later. Sometimes I conjure them from memory. That is absolutely true. Sometimes I don't. 
like when I'm scrambling around and trying to figure out at like 8 a.m. what I'm going to be doing uh, for a lecture that day. You know, as in today. So black turns, white connects, now that everything is nicely uh, either captured or connected. Black gets to fix shape and poke it white. We get to not lose the tree. Why? Why didn't you click? I heard the click. Uh, rats. Oh well. Yeah, 131. Not bad, not bad. I know, it's really good comparing to my last one. I mean, I remember when I was, uh, oh, just a couple of days ago, I was going over a nice Shusaku game, and I got the, what was it, the third move wrong and didn't realize for about 130 moves? Yeah, that was great. That one, that one was nice. I liked that one. That one was fun. Yeah, if any of you haven't seen that one, it, just for the lulls, it's good to go watch that video. Uh, anyway. White Atari. Black, of course, connects. And now black is trying, white is trying to get, uh... Some life for his group, some eyes, things like that, but white's not having it. These are not actual eyes just yet. So maybe we can capture here, but no, we're not going to be able to capture that either. How about if we double Atari? Maybe we can double Atari. No, not going to be able to do that either. And then the unthinkable happens. We're going to play away. White is the embodiment of greedy play. He's studied really, really, really hard to get to this point. I mean, his entire group doesn't have an eye, but we're going to play away. There is M9, don't worry, it gets better. It gets better, it gets better. Black jumps to reduce and threaten to surround. White's gonna save all of his stuff. Threatens to cut off. White saves all of his stuff. So black goes back and cuts, because we're gonna be able to profit, because white needs to protect himself, otherwise he's in trouble. So all of this gets to be ours, while he just connects himself up in a way that doesn't kill him. So free profit for us, that's good. However, and this is a big however, he doesn't connect just yet. He still plays down uh, for reduction. Black strengthens himself, gives himself nice moves in the, uh, in the upper right. Threaten to take two stones, now that would make you live. Getting into some endgame here. White's also poking. Black eliminates the Aji. Hanes connects. End gamey stuff so far. Surely this game is going to go to counting. Must be what everyone here is thinking. Black uh, pokes and pokes and pokes. Playing more reasonable end game than I would. Connects up. That right there is interesting in and of itself. This says I can disconnect you in, like, one stone. Black 
black hanes, white pokes, black connects. Now you can't take those stones anymore in order to live. So white plays the Atari. Connects. How is this game gonna end? How is this game gonna end? Poking through. Threatening to cut through. And guess what white does here? He saves? No, first he saves G- yeah. First he saves uh, these stones, because obviously that's saved now, because we can't Atari, right? We can't play that to self Atari. So those stones are safe. So uh, white gets to drop, or black gets to drop down. I mean, the entire game was like kind of this example of greedy play. And it kind of ends there. Now, to be fair, white is professional. So he's like, okay, maybe I can kill you here. And then white, black says, no, you can't kill me there. If you take, I'm just going to back off and you don't have any eyes yet. You can play here and try and turn this into a capture race or something, but there's just not enough. It's not going to work. Still going to try, but I'm going to throw in, so it's not going to be any kind of co either. So you can't bet on that. We get ourselves an eye here. You can poke it out, but I can increase my liberties and now I'm good to go. You can try and connect under, but we can prevent that as well. And at that point, the only thing you can do is resign. So yeah, fun game. And from start to finish, it's a game that would frustrate me. Absolutely, from start to finish. I mean, it's a kind of style that I really don't like. Uh, my opponent has all the territory, I've got a bunch of influence, and it's up to me to use that influence and profit without, mind you, without being too greedy, because if we get too greedy, we're going to lose everything and we're going to die again. So we have to kind of hold our more uh, greedy urges in check. We can't just, like, uh, like, back here, for example. One thing we can't do is say, all right, I'm going to steal everything in and kill it. It's not going to work. Ah, oh, so frustrating for me. I don't know if you guys have the same problem, but I would absolutely hate being uh, in Black's position here. Ah, <sighs> anyway. I do hope that you guys enjoyed the game as much as I did. I would be white, but I wouldn't die. <laughs> there, yeah, there you go. That's the lesson here. That's the lesson. Be white, only just don't die. Obviously. There you go. So I hope we learned a valuable lesson there. Just don't die in your games and you're fine. Good. Why did why did white resign? Score estimator says white wins. Oh oh, do I want to even click on that? Wow, you're right. Score estimator does say white white wins by ten points if the entire top is dead. Okay, that's interesting. The game isn't how close is the game with white living? Um, can't really have white alive, right? I mean, if white lives on the top, then black's dead. So that's an issue. I can't imagine how this group would live without the other dying. Uh, you'd have to play... what is it? Click, 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 click. You have to not do that, for one. Um, how do you connect, though? Connect here? Immediately? Sorry, um, you said G13, Robert says T9S6. 
What? T9 is an Atari. Oh, okay, I see. Uh, so let's assume White lives here, I guess. And then Black apparently is going to win by about 10 points. So yeah, it's pretty close with White living. But Black's also getting Sente with Endgame. And I'm certain that difference with Endgame being for uh, for Black in a pro level, you're definitely not making that back. Anyway, uh, so that was this game. I hope you guys all enjoyed it. I will see you again a week after next for some more, and maybe in the interim I might even have some more World Baduk stuff.